फेज लै गए हैं ना थोड़ा सा टाइम लै गए वो चिड़ी देखा
Professor Bhaj is delivering the lecture on the topic deriving system equation from von Graaff models and in second session simulating von Graaff models. <coughs> Professor Bhaj, please. Hello. Student to the Thank you, Professor Bomek. So we will start with our session today going to the derivation of system equations from the bond graph model. Uh, but before we do that, we will just uh, take a few more examples because till yesterday we have uh, just taken a, uh, absolutely very, very few examples. So let us take a couple of examples now. Uh, this is the example we saw yesterday and uh, we place the different elements. So this was the electrical side for the electromechanical mechan system of the DC motor. We had the electromagnetic effect provided by the gyrator and then the output side we had the rotary motion of the disc, the change in the angular momentum and we had the gyrator modulus, here we have called it mu. So this is what is responsible for the conversion of current on the in the armature side to torque on the mechanical side. <coughs> and that relationship is provided here. So you have torque is equal to mu times current. And we saw that since this is rotating, the output shaft is rotating with angular speed of omega, the, there is a back EMF experienced on the electrical side as well. <coughs> and this relationship is given by the same equation. Here of course we are assuming that there are no power losses uh, due to this uh, electromechanical relationship. But you can certainly take those into account as well. <coughs> we have we are modeling here the bearing friction which is shown here the, uh, you see there is a uh, bearing and naturally uh, one race of the bearing is uh, in contact with the housing and the other race of the bearing is in contact with the rotor so there is relative motion between the two and that relative motion is equal to omega itself and so you can directly assign this r element this bearing friction element, uh, it is a torsional friction, so it is a moment, it is a torsional moment and uh, it opposes motion. Here we have got uh, an element which we have placed, uh, it is connected through a signal arrow, this is just a measurement which I have shown here. <coughs> this is in order to get an idea of the angular position as well as the angular speed of the output shaft because we may be interested in me measurements as well and provision for that is also provided in bond graph. But you see that we have put a signal arrow, it is not a power arrow and you, you know that ideally sensors are not supposed to supply power to the system or to interact uh, energetically with the system. They can interact with the system in terms of signals, but not in terms of power. So a sensor should not load the system. And that has been represented here with the help of this signal arrow. So next task is we uh, provide numbers to the bonds. You can also provide names or labels to the bonds. Some arbitrary method has been uh, some arbitrary numbering has been done. The states have been identified. 
you see here that we have, can you tell me how many states are involved in this system? In, in modeling this system, can you tell me how many states are involved in this system? In our lectures, we have seen that it is only the I and the C elements that keep a track of the history of the system, of the behavior of the system. So naturally, they are the only ones which are going to contribute. Now you say 3, why do you say 3? See actually, C, the C element that we have added, actually the measurement that we have added, if we did not have the measurement, the system would still have worked. So for description of the system, the measurement is not important. Okay? So the complete representation of the system can be done with the help of just your I element and um, the two I elements, one on the electrical side and the other on the mechanical side. But the interesting aspect is, uh, well, this is going to contribute the electrical momentum to over here, this I element and this is going to contribute the angular momentum on the mechanical side. So you have only two variables and they are good enough to represent the complete dynamics of this system. Okay? They are also called as state variables and they need not be unique as I had mentioned to you earlier. Here because of this measurement we have introduced artificially another state. Actually it is not a state, it is just a measurement. So we are just pulling out flow and we are integrating it. It is like a, it is like placing a potentiometer uh, which is not going to load the basic system or it is like putting a tech, uh, uh, an optical encoder okay, which does not load the uh, physical system significantly. Then we provide the causal strokes, the causal strokes are placed in this fashion. So we have, we start with the sources always. So here you have the effort being provided by this source, then you have the inductance and you know that this is the natural causality of the I element. R can take causality anyway, but you will prefer to put causality like this because you have to respect the causality for the one junction and only one bond is permitted to bring in information of flow inside this one junction. So here is the causality for the one junction. And now comes the issue of the causality for the gyrator. So what do you do? You know that now for the gyrator the input is flow looking at this form of causality. So the causal stroke should be placed at the other end. Then in this one junction here you have the I element which should take a natural causality like this, the stroke towards it. And in order for the causality of this junction to be respected, it is necessary that this R element should take causality like this. Okay? And of course, this is uh, not important uh, from the causal point of view, but it is a measurement. Actually, it is not applying any effort to the system. It is a sensor and actually it is not supposed to apply any effort to the system. It is not applying any effort to the system. Okay, a sensor should not load the basic system uh, whose parameters it is measuring. This is an electromechanical actuator and it works almost exactly on the same lines as what you saw earlier. What we did earlier? 